This is Braun Strowman, the monster among men. And you're listening <laughs> to the Bob Culture Podcast with your host, Rob! All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a very legit episode of the BCP. I'm excited for this one, and please welcome to the show, ahead of her match, this Saturday at Goddesses of War, hallowed ground against our friend Christina Marie. Please welcome to the show, along with their manager, Mr. Gino Gott, hands down one of the fastest rising stars in the business today, number 70 in the PWI Top 100 Women's Wrestlers on the Planet. Please welcome to the show, Ms. Layla Hirsch. What's up, guys? How are you? Hello. Who's friends with Christina Marie? I mean, I mean, you know, we support all the goddesses on the show. Look, I'm a journalist. I have to be, you know, kind of impartial and, and all that you kind of stuff. You kiss everybody's ass just to make sure that, you know... Yeah. Wait, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Why are you so annoying me already? That's okay, that's okay. I, I, oh boy, I can tell this is going to be a fun one. But guys, thank you uh, for a few minutes of your time. First and foremost, 2020 has been super, super crazy. How are you guys? How's the family? How's everyone doing over there? Well, the first, they're breathing. Oh, oh. oh boy. Oh wow, I, okay. this is going to be. I'm sorry. No, don't, don't be. I just talk about my family. Who they ever be? Oh, being boy. nice, being generous. I'm not used to people being nice. That's true. I, I I don't want to get in trouble here, but I hope everyone's safe and well, first and foremost. Uh, now, Layla, I did want to ask you this. Uh, you have a matchup against Christina Marie, who may or may not be my friend, uh, but she has been killing it in goddesses. Statistically, talking purely statistically, she is number one contender for a triple threat match for the goddesses title moving forward she's been putting on a lot of show stealing matches she had a great cage match with holiday i'm just calling it like it is you know uh layla what are your thoughts going into this match versus the likes of christina marie uh i mean good for her that's awesome but i don't care <laughs> do you know why she's beating everybody in titan because layla hasn't made her debut yet i mean ask christina marie who the last person to make her tap out was Pretty oh. sure it was this one in Brooklyn. Wow, well, I respect Christina Marie. Uh, I'm glad that she's been successful, but yeah, I, I don't care. It's over. I just show up, kick ass, you know? But, you know, I'm sure it'll be a good fight. I'm sure it'll be a good fight. Christina will be lucky if she's able to make the next Titan show if her arm is dislocated from her socket. Wow, this uh. is... This is awesome. Uh, well, I think uh, this could has the potential to be a show stealing match, hands down. Like we always say here on the BCP, the real winners, the fans. I know you love that, Gino. Um, <laughs> Every one of them. Oh, there it is. So, Layla, just to, not to be cliche, but to rewind yeah, a little ahead. bit, you know, um, I remember you watching you, you know, very early, like standalone wrestling and, and seeing you at these big conventions that we had in New Jersey, all these all these kind of things. And you've come so far in such a short amount of your time, a short amount of time. Like, what do you attribute to this this fast rise? What, you have an opinion here, Gino, I see. Yeah, watching the short stuff, all right? What's that? Use your words wisely. Oh, watch oh. the short stuff. Yeah. Listen, you call me that all the time. I can. You're a little asshole. No, nah, um, I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. You're fine. Uh, to be honest, I think like I've gotten very fortunate and like lucky because like I got to go to Germany, and like I think to me like that was a high pressure situation. Um, man. and then I'm getting there, man. I'm getting there. And then um, <laughs> and then yeah, like. Being in Japan for three months with the top company, Stardom, uh, man, that was a that was a really good experience. Like a lot of learning there. Um, but I I don't know. Like I've been very fortunate to have gotten such opportunities. Like at this time, you know, um, I don't. I hope that helps you in, like with the answer. You know. That's a that's a great answer. And, you know, we see, yeah. like, I saw you start now. And even back then, you were great. You've had this great wave of momentum. We have people on the show, the likes of, like, Tommy Musa comes on. Oh, check out, you got to check out Layla. I'm like, yeah, we know Layla. Like, yeah. it's fantastic. Everyone, everyone's a fan. You're doing great things right now. Obviously, you have this match at Goddesses coming up. Um, I guess, real quick, I wanted to ask you, who were kind of, like, your influences growing up uh, in the business? Did you, like, watch as a kid or anything like that? So I didn't know what independent wrestling was. I just grew up watching WWE. Uh, mm -hmm. So like with WWE, it was like my number one was Jeff Hardy. That's Jeff my Hardy. 
you know uh well like once I got like once once I discovered independent wrestling, it was like um Lefisto, Mercedes, Aza, like those were my top two, like, you know. And now like, man, like Miko Satamora, she's like one of my dream matches now. Uh but there's so many, like so many great freaking wrestlers now. I look up to a lot of them. Um uh, but yeah. Yeah. No, look. Great, great answer. And you mentioned the likes of Alou Fisto. Let, let's talk about that match. I mean, not to be cliche again, but All I right. mean, talk about a show stealer. What what a great match. I, I watched it again today before the interview. Uh, some great technical wrestling, some great spots in that one. Uh, mm-hmm. It was fantastic. What did that mean to you to be a part of that match? It was awesome because, like, like I said, that was a high-pressure situation because I wasn't even, like, supposed to go to the finals, you know, but then I ended up in the finals. So I know, like, I faced Lefisto once before in CZW. Uh, and I just, I love having matches with her because I was very comfortable. I know even, like, at her age, she's still, like, willing to go, willing to, like, take anything, you know. So it was really, uh, it was fun. But, like, it was nerve-wracking. It was. But thankfully, like, we were able to deliver. But she's amazing to work with. Just, you know, uh, yeah, like, just. Yeah, very sweet, and, you know, just gives her knowledge of her experiences, which helps me, of course, you know. So it was it was awesome. What a, yeah. It was awesome. It, was awesome. Happy 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 here. it really, really, really was really awesome. And, you know, what you, and, and before the crystal hangs him up, <laughs> she's going to get her in the ring one more time, and she's going to tap her out this time. Oh. Yeah. Again, you know. I yeah, love it. I would, I would love to have another match with this, though. Absolutely. Oh, man. That that would be fantastic. And obviously, yeah. you know, I saw you post on social media a while ago. That match was picked up and put on the WWE Network. Just real quick, what was your immediate reaction when you heard that news? I didn't believe it. <laughs> I woke up, and then I, I saw somebody message me about it, and I was like, wait, what? Is that really happening? Uh, it's just – it's such a really cool feeling. Like, you know, I don't know. It's just – that's amazing, you know, like very fortunate, you know, very just fortunate that all all that happened, you know. How many wrestlers on the goddesses roster can you type into the WWE network and get a result from? One. Wow. Just one. That's a statement right there, and and no disrespect, we love our goddesses here, especially on the BCP. And and I will will say this: a lot of talent there, a lot of great people, a lot of great personas. Yes, we put over everyone over here, but um, you know, a lot a lot of these ladies on the goddesses roster, I I think they're going to be showing up. You know, who knows where in the next year or two. So uh, we wish everyone the best. I see Gino shaking his head at my positivity over here. It's a power of positivity, Gino. Um, and, you know, speaking of you, Gino, let's let's throw it back to you, my man. I, I'm familiar with you through some of your clients and such, uh, the likes of our good pal Casey Navarro. Uh, I believe you may or may not have worked with uh, our friend Casey Cattell. Um, Tell us a little bit about kind of like your your lineage working with these wrestlers and then how you kind of connected with uh, Layla. Pretty much I see talent and then I mold them and then I make them champions is what happens. I met Casey Navarro when he was 15 and he walked into school as a little baby. Boom. Saw talent right away. Yeah. Where is he now? Blessed. Yeah. And does he have a little bit of an attitude on him now? You think, no, you I, think that's, I think that's a coincidence? Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> Casey can tell. Where was she? She was some... The dude's in Long Island, you know, just a generic wrestler. He comes down to Jersey. She got a little bit of an attitude. Now she's killing it on the indies as some fucking hardcore queen of a uh, stream. Then you get this, bro. Wow. No respect. Walk, go ahead. Go ahead. Walk into CZW, and there's this tiniest. Little Tum Tum just walking around, carrying, oh. carrying the two by fours and the rings. And I'm like, hey, where's your mom? Is she going to come pick you up soon? But no, it was Layla, you know, a full, full grown person. And then I got to see her in the ring and she blew my mind. Just, you know, she's been in the ring not very long at all, but she picks it up like that. 
quicker than somebody like Kurt Angle. She just gets in the ring and she knows what she's doing. So, wow. of course, I wanted to attach myself to that because she's going to be a star. She's going to be rich and famous. And she's going to be, you know, have that extra room in the mansion for uh, Gina. You might be invited. You might be. I'm just moving in and I'm not paying rent. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's how that is. Well, I, I see nothing but success, you know, seeing uh, obviously Layla early on and where she's gotten in such a short amount of time, that's for sure. Now, Layla, you mentioned, you know, obviously, you know, being a fan, watching, uh, then, you know, becoming more familiar with the indies. Um, where did you where did you train? Um, I think it was was a jersey. Was it more the CZW kind of guys? Was it Monster mm-hmm. Factory? Where did you kind of start out training? Yeah, uh, it was CZW. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah, that was my first school. Um and but like now I'm over at Cheeseburger School in Bristol, PA. Yeah, yeah, yeah with with her, uh, with him and Sumi Sakai. So yeah, those are like the two main places. That's great. That's the secret right there. He's he's great. Uh, that's that's awesome to hear. And uh, you know, we talk about the this goddesses roster. There's so much going on. Gino, you mentioned capturing gold. You know, you attach yourself to people and the quest for gold. Is there a kind of like uh maybe an eye? I mean, you're you're fighting the number one contender here in the goddesses brand. Again, tickets are still available for the show Saturday. But I digress. Um, is the goddesses championship a goal for you guys right now? That's the stupidest question I've ever heard in my life. Why would anybody get into a sport not to be the champion? Uh, it's like starting off the baseball season and saying, you know what? I don't feel like winning the World Series this year. Or getting into a, uh, a boxing match and being like, you know what? Nah, I'm good today. I don't feel like fighting the champion. That is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. Congratulations. You made that list. Well, so, yeah. Right after she beats Christina Marie, who is your number one contender, that just makes her the number one contender. So, pretty much, if Vicky's ready that night, we, we can go home with the title this Saturday. But I'll digress. And after that, we'll wait for whatever gimmick match they want to throw at her because, you know, they want to keep their champion, Vicky, when she does all the promotions for them. But we're not doing that. We're not, we're not going on 80s mania. We're, we're not doing all this promotion bullshit for them. We're coming in. We're taking their title. We're putting some respect on it is what we're doing for them. And we're doing what we want. And it'll never come off until we're ready to give it back. That's it. I uh, agree. When somebody in Florida or Connecticut invites her up, that's when we'll give back the title. We're not going to lose the title. We're going to give it back one day. Okay? Wow. I mean, you you said it. I mean, I, I can't argue with that. For sure. And, uh, you know, Layla, you have uh, so much, I mean, so much going for you right now. You talk about, and Gino, you touched on this a little bit, uh, gimmick matches, that stuff, you know, uh, TCW, the goddesses brand, they, they always raise the bar. I mean, literally raise the bar. They've had two cage matches at their last event. We talked about Christina Marie taking on holiday, holiday in that cage match. Um, is, is that something you'd like to be more involved with? Have you done cage matches before Layla? Is that something you'd like to be a part of? No, I've actually never done one, but yeah, I would love to do one. 100% I would. If, if it's right. Oh, okay. Yeah, they got the If, if the situation calls for it, okay? Understood. It's not just going to be some random Wednesday night in Jackson, New Jersey, and that she's going to be doing a moon off the cage. It's going to be the big time where there's a title on the line, the money's right, the crowd is packed, and it's going to be in the right time, all right? Not just any of these shows that you want to put on uh, hey I'm just, again just a journalist here so just just asking the questions um and i did i did want to ask you this one uh you talk about make, making the big time uh you know there's no doubt in my mind you guys are you know all you ladies are going places especially in the, the goddesses brand uh you know 473 i believe is that correct on the uh pwi 500 and then number 70 in the pwi top 100 women's wrestlers i mean this one you're talking about that, that would be the one wow yes sir that is correct i mean that that's amazing i know so many talents uh, that have been on this show and that's not a plug just uh you know I, I see dreams come true man i'm seeing some of my friends show up in some places it warms my heart i love to see dreams come true when you see your name in like with those other names and in that magazine what does that mean to you Layla? that that's amazing uh, it means all my hard work is paying off. 
Yeah. You know, everything I'm doing is, you know, I'm doing it right. Uh, so seeing my name in that list, it just means like I'm all the work, I can't talk. all the hard work has paid off. Um, uh, and it, it's pretty awesome. Like, you know, cause the list, like, it's so funny. Cause like, if I see, like, I've only been wrestling for like a little bit over two and a half years now. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, so I've wanted to be on a list, you know? So sometimes like, like, the, like the times I didn't make it, I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. I don't care about the list, but no, I do care. <laughs> so this year to be in the PWI 500 and then the women's 100, uh, it is a pretty amazing feeling and accomplishment too. I would say it pisses me off. Really? Have you seen some of the names that are in front of her? Oh, it's kind of bullshit. There's a lot of those names that belong right in the back. Yikes. We'll do uh, a <laughs> <you, I, I, laughs> review on the show. <laughs> might might be some editing in this episode. Um, we did do, we're did. we going to do a PWI 500 review. And again, I love seeing a lot of these great names on the list. Personally, I would have picked Adam Cole, Bebe, uh, to be number one over Moxie, but I digress. Um, you talk about big things moving forward, uh, Gina. You talk about like the, you know those grand stages and all that kind of stuff. This is a fun fan question we always like to ask everyone. Layla, I don't know if you have any favorite bands or anything, but what live band would you love to have play you out to the ring? Uh, yeah, I was actually going to say I would do Hailstorm. Yes. Oh, Lizzie. Oh my God. Have you seen them live? No, and I mean. To be honest, I had no idea who they were until my music entrance song. So I really had, um, it's, it was Zach. Oh, okay. He picked it for me. Yeah, because I needed a music entrance. And I was like, Zach, pick it. So he picked it, and I freaking love it. It just goes with everything I am, you know, like just my character, my charisma. So I would love for them to play, play my music entrance yeah. one day live. Yeah. That'd be really cool. The first time I heard it. We were practicing your entrance oh, at um, Cage of Death at the ECW Arena, which was so fucking cool. That was dope. That's where she beat Mercedes Martinez. I did, yeah. Um, yeah. So she's coming out, and the music hits, and it's like, holy shit, this is, goes exactly with the badass image mm -hmm. that you're giving off. It's perfect. It's perfect, yep. Yeah. You know the song we're talking about, Mr. Misery? Yes, I do. I, I, in fact, I was listening to Hailstorm uh, a, a little while ago today. I love that. I've seen them live a few times. They're great. Drums are fantastic. She's fantastic. I digress. Now, uh, Layla, did you mention, did you say your dad helped you pick that? Is that what you said? No, no, no. Uh, my friend Zach, he, Zach. Like, he like, did the music and like all the stuff in CZW. So, oh, okay. He just, he was like, he was like a backstage producer type of Yeah. Way. I, I understand. Um, so I wanted to ask you this, like, again, another fun kind of fan question. You're like here on the BCP, you know, we support uh, the worlds of, of the indie wrestling and then a lot of the local music scene here in like the Asbury Park, New Jersey area. Do you do you play? Have you ever attempted to play like the guitar or sing or anything like that? In fifth grade, I tried out for the drums. Failed. That's me. That's, that's, that's I totally failed. So I ended up playing the trombone for two years. Completely oh sucked, but it was okay. Like, I tried, you know. Why did you fail the drums? Couldn't hit the cymbals? Yeah. Oh, you <laughs> didn't get fired. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my mansion. No, she can lock in an arm bar at any time, man. I would try to try to stay on, on her good side. Just saying. You're uh, right. I got, I got weapons around here, though, so. He does, though. <laughs> he does. Um, but, yeah, so I just, I played a trombone, but I always, I always was a big fan of, like, drums. I just felt like they were badass and cool. I just, I guess I was never cool enough to make it, but it's all right. I played the saxophone when I was a kid. Did you suck at it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, dr drummer, big drummer over here. So I'll show you something sometime if we're ever back, you know, doing something on a pad. Drums are the best, so awesome. that, that's all I got. Very cool. But, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, short-term goals, you know, in terms of the indie scene. What are, what are the long-term long -term goals moving mm -hmm. forward? There's a lot going on in the wrestling world these days. It's another stupid question. It's there we go. Dumb question. What are your long-term girls? I don't know. Maybe you to get signed to a contract or a major promotion? No. Not in my list of things to do. I want to be on the Indies making 25 bucks every match for the next 20 years. That's what I want to do. That's all. I have you answering. I mean, I'm actually like worth way more than $25. <laughs> I'm 
so much of this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, it is what he said, just to be a contracted wrestler. Um, and, you know, hopefully that, that will be happening, you know? Yeah, all the hard work you're putting in, no doubt in my mind for sure. And to be fair, Gino, you know, we do ask this question a lot on on the show. For the fans, they want to know. I've had people come back and say, like, hey, you know, I, I want to keep doing the indie thing. You know, some people, you know, they actually do make a living doing the indie thing. I've had one person say, hey, I want to open a school. So, you know, you know, you never know. Um, who knows down the road? To, to, to be fair. Uh Layla, if uh you know, this could be, you know, kind of hypothetical. Like, if you were to choose, you know, and, and a lot of these organizations, we're seeing, uh, you know, the women's tag team belts kind of come back in a lot of these organizations uh, and organizations. We're seeing them rumored to come back in a lot of these organizations. We're seeing a lot of these women's tag t- tournaments coming about. If you could choose hypothetically, you know, it could be a tag team partner like right now on the indies or more so um, – Let's go past, present, future. Maybe like a legend. Would there would there be and it could be male or female? What would be like an ideal tag team partner for you? Um, I think for like so say we did guys, it'd probably be Kurt Angle or Taz for sure. Love it. Um, uh, man, with females, maybe with Fisto. Wow. Maybe uh, mm-hmm. Jazz. Oh, jazz, yeah. Jazz, jazz and you would be pretty bad. Jazz, would, yes. Um, and Mika Satamora. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jazz just retired. That's a great question. And again, not to be cliche here, but, you know, the fans want to know, what what is the, what's the dream match right now? What's the dream? We can go past, present, future. We can, you know, would it be Kurt Angle? I mean, that would be amazing. Uh, but I think right now I want to get in the ring with Mika Satamora. Nice. I got to like meet her in Japan and oh man, just yeah, she's she's a just yeah, just meeting her was just like let's get in the ring right now. So you know, you get a chance to, huh? You didn't get a chance to, I, I to get in the ring with her, yeah, no, but she's with Sendai, so I you can't really uh, do both, I don't think, but uh, she did okay. tell me she wanted to be she wanted to wrestle me, so that was mm-hmm. really cool. So, yeah, she was one of my dreams. So, just... in the future, we'll defend the Goddesses Championships against her. Actually, yes, that's the only person I'll defend it against. That's it. Ah. We'll wow. at... Book it, yes. Uh, more more fan questions here, uh, Layla, if that's okay. Uh, favorite match of all time? I guess, I don't know if that was meant for that you've been a part of or maybe that you saw on TV. Well, I'll ask you both, I guess. What was your favorite match that you were a part of? I mean, I have some guesses. And then a favorite match that you watched on TV. Um, so I guess, I guess like, uh, wrestling Merce- Mercedes Martinez. That was yeah. a pretty special moment for me. Yeah. Uh, and then stepping in the ring with Lefisto in Germany. That was, uh, like, another pretty uh, sweet moment. One of my favorite matches I've seen on TV Oh man! You just if you have one, maybe it's like a WrestleMania you watched. Um, maybe it was something with the Ang. I'm getting a, a feeling it's more of a technical one. That's kind of my. I actually just showed her um, Taz's debut at the Garden versus Kurt Angle. Yes. Oh, there. Oh, there you go. That's good. Yeah, I was there for that one. That was an intense time. That's awesome. Um, do you, do you guys kind of keep up? Try to keep up. Like I know you guys are concentrating on the Indies and all that stuff. Do you guys kind of? keep up with like the current products on, on TV and all that? At times. It depends yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's, it's tricky nowadays. And I'll ask you guys this kind of, uh, you know, not get political or anything like that, but uh, you know, we, we see, you know, obviously 2020 has been very strange. You know, we see kind of uh, the lack of fans on television, you know, they're making all sorts of, um, you know, I guess I'll ask you guys from a performing uh, perspective we see all sorts of adjustments whether it be the thunderdome whether it be performers at ringside whether it be limited capacity crowds uh i ask you this layla how important is it to you being competitor to have those fans there to have that feedback you know right now we started out doing drive-in shows here in jersey now we're doing socially distant shows how how much do the fans mean to you when you're in the ring uh, everything because you you go off the fans you know what i mean so they help like to keep the energy um and just don't, like you just get the whole vibe from them uh so they're very important so like when you don't have them it sucks you know because you like you feed off the fans so if you don't have them you have to like just 
don't know. And you've done them both. You've been in front of five people at Dojo Wars and a couple of hundred people at other shows. So yeah. she knows the best it's of all, both yeah, I Yeah, that's true. I think uh, I think a lot of wrestlers, when they start, you know, we get to experience that. You yeah. know, with no, like no fans and then like thousands of fans. Um, and honestly, I think it's easier the more fans there is. Yeah, I think there, yeah. The more people there are in the arena, the easier it is to perform out there. The, mm-hmm. the, the less intimate thing, you don't hear everybody's specific comments. comments and that's true. You just hear the roar of the crowd and you can feed off of it and do what you need to and adjust when you need to. Yeah, feed off the energy. That that's great. Yeah, fans are so so important, man. We're so appreciative to have any wrestling yeah. these days. Uh, you know, there's not really like arena stuff right now that we can go to. So as fans here and journalists, we're happy to have any sort of wrestling these days. Um, wrestling fans are also just giant pieces of garbage. Wait, what's that? Wrestling fans are also giant pieces of garbage. Uh, you know, this is why I did not ask you that uh, question, Gito. <laughs> uh, another fun fan question here. Um, the favorite, I guess, pizza spot they're asking. I guess we always do like a lot of food stuff here. Uh, do you have like a p- favorite pizza stuff or are you a pizza person? Yeah, I love pizza. <laughs> I, I love food in general. Oh, you I are? You I, just, I love food. Uh, my favorite is bread. I love bread. Really? Yeah. Then, so, so as a as a wrestler, you know, obviously you see a lot of these guys like they they stay away from the carbs and stuff. So, do you, do you kind of have to like manage the bread? Or you, I mean, you're always working out, right? Yeah, like my thing is like I'll eat good Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends I have a little fun, you know. Oh, and then, yeah. So. yeah, she just ate about two pounds of chicken cutlets, half a loaf of bread, <laughs> half a bowl of mozzarella. <laughs> I did, yeah. Yeah, whatever. She ate nice. She eats so she eats good when she comes here. I do. Uh, I love to eat though. So yeah. That's awesome. Uh, you guys are making me hungry already. But um, th- this was great. I do want to be respectful of, of your guys' time. This this was a lo- lot of fun, even with you, Gino. Um, but I did want to say this before we get out of here. Layla, again, we keep saying how you've accomplished so much in just a short amount of time. Thank you so much, Gino. You weren't looking up, <laughs> um uh, just any advice you would have to like some of these, you know, indie wrestlers that are trying to get to that next level, trying to get over, trying to connect with the fans, trying to work on their in ring stuff. Any advice you would have? Uh, yeah, well, you just said it. Uh, I think for me, it's to get to training and train as much as possible. Like, I'm lucky because I have amateur wrestling background, so I picked it up really quick. But for like the younger people, like, get in the ring as much as possible. You know, uh, and travel with good people, though. So surround yourself with good people. I think that's why I'm successful in a way, because I had good people that believed in me. Um, you know, was one of them. You know, I know he doesn't come off like that. He's one of them, though. He's helped me a lot. So that's what I would say. Like, just uh, get in the ring, train as much as possible. Always be respectful and humble. Uh, but, yeah, just surround yourself with good people. They're going to want to uh, have you succeed, you know? Very, very well said. That that was awesome. And uh, continued success for you, Leila. Before we get out of here, though, we're all about the shameless promo here on the BCP. Uh, where can everyone follow you guys on social media, get your merch, all that good stuff? No, I know. I don't know what your social media is. Uh, you can do like, and, uh, okay. right, you know. Just all right. Where they can oh, find no, your no, no. Oh, I thought you can like make it like exciting. I don't know what your ads are. You do know. I can type it in. It pops up. Oh my god. All right. So I'll type it in I'll No, do something you know. All right. Um, so you can find me at legit Layla Hirsch. I think that's what it is. On Twitter. I don't even know it myself to be honest. But yeah, you can find me on Twitter. Oh, no, it's not. It's not what it is. Legit underscore Layla. Whatever, underscore. legit. <laughs> them? Just fucking Google Layla Hirsch. I'll, I'll, tag, I'll tag you in the interview. Don't yeah, worry. You, you, I'm on there. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Yeah. That's where you can find me at. <laughs> Well, this was a lot of fun, guys. Thank you uh, so much, Layla. This was an honor. Thank you so much for a few minutes of your time. I look forward to seeing you Saturday at Goddesses of War. Tickets are still available. Uh, It's going to be a great match, guys. I can't wait. Are you calling her a match? Are you Uh, you sitting there the whole time? Are you doing a select number? This uh, so this is not this is not about me in any way, shape, or form. But yes, I will be making my debut on commentary along. uh, Wasn't my guess. Wasn't my guess. Technically, yes, I believe I will be calling said match. Oh, so you'll be there the whole show? Yes, I believe so. 
Okay, so just know I'll be listening back. <laughs> and if oh, there's anything God. I don't like, we're gonna have another conversation. Oh boy. Make sure well, you learn, to learn the move names, come up with something a little creative. That'd be nice. And okay. make sure you put her over to the moon. Okay. And you bury Christina Marie in that funny haircut. You know, Christina Marie used oh, to be this powerlifting superstar wrestler. Every single day of quarantine, Layla Hirsch has been working out and training. What is Christina Marie doing? She's like this supermodel now, posing in bikinis and going to the pool. She's not a killer anymore. She's got content, and she's just another pretty face, and we're going to break her arm. And then after that, Vivian Vicky, or whatever her name is, I don't know even know where she came from, Staten Island or something like that, we're going to send her back across the bridge, beltless, and we're just taking over. Tell all your friends we said that. I, I 100% will. Uh, I, I sure do hope you like puns, Gino, because I got a ton of them for commentary. Yeah, right but, uh, and who uh, makes the matches? Bunny? See Bunny? See, Bunny is the manager, and of course, uh, Billy Charles and AG are running, uh, obviously. Yeah, got she's it. like the general manager now, so make sure. I'm sorry, guys. It's all him. Sorry, it's not me. I love Sea Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Throw him in an R bar for me, please, will you? Uh, shout out to our friend C Bunny, who just put out a great documentary. Check that out on YouTube. Yeah, Very interesting. But you guys, for real, thank you so much for a few minutes. This was an honor to have you guys on the show. Um, you know, stay safe and lots of success, obviously, moving forward. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, man. Thank Nothing. you. Man. <laughs> All right. Well, before I, I get the uh, stare of death and uh, Gino punches me through the uh, Skype call here, uh, as we always say here on the BCP, everyone stay safe. Stay positive. Stay positive, Gino. Take care of each other. We're out. Peace. Peace.